In 2003, Italian researchers published a scientific article claiming that eating pizza can reduce the risk of certain cancers. That's right, one of the most consumed foods on Super Bowl Sunday, greasy, cheesy, salty pizza, is linked to fighting cancer. Newspaper headlines, online blogs, and editorials picked up on this astonishing study, creating headlines like, Eating pizza cuts cancer risk, why pizza can fight cancer, and pizza reduces cancer risk. Now you may be thinking, can eating pizza really cut the risk of cancer? Is there a causal relationship between my favorite meat lover's deep dish and healthy living? Well, not exactly. You see, correlation does not imply causation. That is to say, if A is related to B, that doesn't necessarily mean A caused B. This is a common error in our thinking. Looking deeper into the research findings, there is much more than meets the eye. In this Psychedemia episode, I explore correlations, how two variables, yes, even pizza and health, are related. It is very tempting, and even exciting for food lovers, to read these aforementioned headlines and think that eating pizza can cause a reduction in cancer risk. But other scientists, and even the authors of the study, caution readers to quickly make a causal relationship. It turns out that a Mediterranean diet is more likely the cause of fighting cancer and healthy living, a diet that is rich in olive oil, fish, grains, fruits, and yes, tomatoes, one of the main ingredients on a pizza. Why does a correlation not imply causation? It is common to think that when two things relate to one another or appear linked, like money and happiness, violent video games and aggressive behavior, and eating breakfast and success in school, that one caused the other. But there are several reasons to be cautious. For instance, maybe there is a third variable. Oftentimes two variables appear to be linked to each other, but in actuality there is another unknown or third variable that is a real source of the link. This is called the third variable problem. Let's take a look at one of these examples. For decades, psychologists have investigated a link between first-person killing games, like Grand Theft Auto and Call of Duty, and aggressiveness in boys. One could argue that playing violent video games causes aggressive behavior. This argument supports why politicians in the past have tried to put an age limit on purchasing violent video games. However, one could also make the argument that a child who is already aggressive is more likely to seek out and play violent video games because it connects to their personality. Of course, what about a third variable? Some studies have shown that exposure to family violence, like spousal and child abuse, is associated with youth violence and an increased risk for playing violent video games. This finding reminds us that we should not jump to conclusions when establishing links between two variables. It is also very common for people to see relationships between variables when none exist, like eating candy and hyperactivity. This is called an illusory correlation. Let's take a look at a common example ubiquitous in sports. Superstitions. Athletes are renowned for being superstitious. They often develop unusual rituals to keep hitting streaks alive or to end terrible slubs, for example. Anything to get the bad juju off their back, whether wearing the same lucky socks or eating the same meal before every game. From a psychological perspective, athletes have convinced themselves that a relationship exists between performing specific rituals and performing well on a field. Unfortunately, this relationship is merely a fallacy. So, why do psychologists conduct correlational research? Foremost, psychologists are interested in the relationship between two variables, specifically how well one variable predicts the presence or absence of another variable. Psychologists study relationships in all walks of life like the relationship between attendance and GPA, money and happiness, intelligence and income, and depression and eating habits. Notice how the arrows are pointing in both directions. As I stated previously, this is because it's very difficult to make a causal relationship between two variables. Figuring out how closely two variables relate to or predict one another is measured using a statistical measure called correlation coefficient. This index measures the strength of a correlation. Represented by Pearson's R, the value of a correlation can range from positive 1.0 to negative 1.0, each being a perfect correlation. An R of 0 means no relationship exists between two variables. A correlation of positive 0.87, for example, will be considered very strong, while a negative 0.27 will be considered weak. Before we move on, check your understanding of the strength of a correlation. 
Take a look at the following R values and identify the strength of each score. Pause the video here. How'd you do? Think about the mistakes you made, if any, and rewind the video to clarify any confusion. It is important to note that positive doesn't mean good and negative doesn't mean bad, but rather positive and negative signify the direction of the correlation. Specifically, a positive correlation implies that one variable predicts the presence of another variable. In other words, as the value of one variable increases, the value of the other variable increases as well. For example, there is a positive correlation between the time you spend on a treadmill and the number of calories burned. In other words, the more you run, the more calories you lose. There is also a positive correlation between the amount of coffee you drink and level of alertness. The more coffee you drink, the more alert you will be in the classroom or office. Conversely, a negative correlation implies that one variable predicts the absence of another variable. In other words, as the value of one variable increases, the value of the other variable decreases. For example, there is a negative correlation between alcohol consumption and judgment. In other words, the more alcohol you drink, the less judgment one has. There is also a negative correlation between the amount of garlic in your home and vampires. The more garlic hanging in your kitchen, the less vampires will step foot in your house. Check your understanding of positive and negative correlations. Pause the video here and brainstorm a few examples before moving on. Lastly, how do psychologists graph correlations? Correlations are graphed on scatter plots, like the one seen above. The slope of the scatter plot indicates the direction of the correlation, while the scatter of the data points indicates the strength. Each participant or event in a study is represented by a dot or data point on the scatter plot. The more scatter between data points, for example, would mean there is a weak correlation between two variables. The closer the data points are bunched together on the line of best fit would indicate a stronger relationship. Before we finish, check your understanding of the correlational method. Fill in the blanks to make the statement accurate. Pause the video here before checking your answers. If you had any trouble filling in the blanks, rewind the video and continue to review.